In this video, I will be showing you Japanese short rows. Japanese short rows are another method, technique to um, make short rows. They, in my experience, are the best looking short rows for stockinette. They look the smoothest and uh, have the fabric the least interrupted. They're a little fiddly to work, however, so I usually use them when I am uh, extremely concerned about what my fabric looks like. If I'm working in a stockinette on a sweater in a finer weight yarn, I would take the time and use Japanese short, short rows. To work these, you will knit to your turning point and then you turn your work. One of the reasons this looks so nice and smooth is because it uses slip stitches. I, you will need a stitch marker or something. I like to use bobby pins, I have them around. And they add a little more weight. So you, You've turned your work, you will slip this stitch purlwise and then attach a stitch marker or in this case a bobby pin to the working yarn and keep that right up against that slipped stitch. And now you will purl across. On the wrong side now, again, you will work up to your turning point. We'll say here, you turn your work, you slip that first stitch purlwise, and again, attach your stitch marker or whatnot to the working yarn and hold that right up against the stitch. And then knit. I will do one more set. So you will turn, slip that stitch purlwise, attach your stitch marker, get it snug up against there, and then purl. And then again, turn, slip that stitch purlwise, attach your marker to the working yarn, and then knit. Now, some, some uh, tutorials show this step incorrectly. This, this stitch was slipped. I've marked the yarn. The marker is sitting, because the stitch was slipped, the marker is actually sitting in between, right here, in between these two stitches. If I knit this stitch and then see that my marker is right there and, and pull the loop up like I'm going to show you and work it together with this stitch. Well, this was the stitch that was slipped. We don't want to work this loop of yarn with the stitch that was slipped. We want to work this loop of yarn which with the next stitch to close this gap. There is a gap here. We want to close this gap. This marker is marking a loop of yarn that we will pull up to use to bridge this gap. So I am going to knit this stitch and then pull up the marker and pull a loop 
and place it on my left hand needle. I'm making sure this loop is open and not twisted and I'm inserting my left hand needle so that the right leg of that loop is in front like a normal stitch and then I remove my bobby pin or my stitch marker and now I will knit these two together like so. The slip stitch helps to bridge the gap and then pulling the loop bridges the gap the rest of the way. So again, here's my gap. There is my bobby pin in between these two stitches, but I'm not knitting it together with this stitch or this stitch. I'm going to knit it together with this stitch. So I need to work both of these stitches. So you work up to and including the stitch in front of the gap. And then you pull your stitch marker or your bobby pin, keeping that loop open and insert your left hand needle into it with the right leg in front. Remove your bobby pin and then knit these two together. Nice and smooth. So, and then on the wrong side, it is the same process, only one step is a little bit different. There is my gap. There is my pin in between these two stitches, but there's the gap. So I will purl up to and including the stitch before the gap. So don't worry that that pin is in between those two stitches. We want to purl all of these like so, including this one. There's my gap. Now, I want to pull this loop, but I'm joining it with this. I can't purl two together with this loop like this because then the loop will be in the on the right side of the work and we want to hide it to the wrong side of the work, loops, uh, wrong side of the work. So I need to get this loop onto the needle to the left of this stitch that I'm working it together with. So I need to first slip that stitch purlwise and then pull this loop untwisted with the right leg in front like so and then slip that stitch we slipped back and now purl these two together and that loop will be on the wrong side of the work. So again I will purl up to and including the stitch before the gap, like so. I need to get this knit, this loop together with this stitch, but to get it to fall to the wrong side of the work, first I slip the stitch purlwise, then pull my loop up, place it on my left hand needle untwisted, like so, slip that one back, and then purl these two together. And that is nice. You cannot see where those are. looks very nice. So it is fiddly and you need, if you've got a lot of short rows, um, you'll need a lot of stitch markers or bobby pins. Uh, but if you really want your fabric to look the best that it can look, your stockinette stitch fabric, then the, sometimes they are worth the effort. So those are Japanese short rows. Thanks for watching.